Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. In this video today is the giant squid problem day four for the 2021 advent of code. I have to admit today I have, I, I'm scatterbrained, I'm thinking of all sorts of other things I got to do for work for my, for my students and for myself and for my family and this one took me a little while but I did end up getting an answer. So the, there's a bingo game. So basically you're just playing bingo and you're trying to figure out who's the first person to win. And then after you found out who, what they won, you have to multiply the number that won the game, multiply that by the sum of all of the values on that specific board that are not hit. Basically that did not get a hit during the game of the bingo. And oh yeah, that couldn't be any easier, right? So. <laughs> At least, and that's part one, right? We're like, oh my god, what's part two going to be? But usually, part two is uh, part two isn't usually too bad if you've if you've kind of thought properly through part one. So here we go. Open the data file, and so the first line is where the drawn numbers are. So I went ahead and I eliminated the new line character, split by commas. Everything seems to be all different, all different types of data in there. And then you take that and you convert all those strings into integers. So there, this gets you all the drawn numbers. And then the cards themselves, I'm just storing as a 25 integer list. So while I can read, while I can read, okay, I, I, I read the line because there's always a blank line. If you look at the data, oops, look at the data. There's a whole ton of stuff. And then there's always a blank line and five lines, blank line and five lines. And I'm just going to presume that's the format of the data. And at the end, there's no such thing as a line after it. So that's what I'm doing. Read a line and then read five lines. And this is pretty complicated. But all I'm doing is, and for some reason, there's extra spaces involved. That one took me a while. But I just say, do the same kind of stuff where I take the line, eliminate all the new line characters, split it by the spaces, eliminate the, just the blank empty characters. I don't even know what those are. And then put that, put that into and extend that into the card, which is a list. So five elements at a time, five times over you end up doing that and card ends up being a 25, uh, 25 element list that gets put into the cards. So essentially I have a list of all the game cards that could be played at any given time. So when I'm done with this, I have all the cards as 25 element lists, as a list of 25 element lists, and I have the drawn values in order uh, left to right as a list as well. So that's what this code does from that data. And so the next thing I knew, need to do is to determine if one of a specific card is a winner. And so how I do that is, since it's a 25 element list and the only winners are rows and columns, there's none of that fancy stuff where you have like postage stamps or co four corners, any of that stuff that I've heard about growing up as a kid and playing through. Uh, so as you can see then, I wanna check to see Basically, if I, find, if I find a winner, I'm out immediately, but if I go all the way through and I can't find a winner, then I obviously don't have a winner. So I'm saying for all the rows, I just kind of hard-coded this, and, you say, and, and just so you know, as, you'll, as I'll talk about this in a couple minutes, that once, I, once a number is active, activated, you know, you call the number out and you, you daub it, then you're putting a, I'm putting a 100 in there. So basically, if, if I'm starting at element 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, that's the first row. If all of those sum up to 500, then there's no number greater than 99 on here, in here. So 100 would be per, is perfect. Say so if that sums up to 500, then return true. Otherwise, go to the next row and do it again. Go to the next row and do it again. Go to the next row. And if I fall through, none of the rows work because I'm, ret I'm returning out Im immediately because we have a winner. Bingo! And if I do the same now with the columns, but columns are every five elements, and every time I move over, I move over one, but it's the same rule. If, as long as, I, you know, as long as I can find five values in a row that sum up to 500, I return true. But this time, if I fall through, there are no bingos because it, the horizontal row and the vertical columns all came back negative. So no bingos today. Old McDonald at a farm. And so here is the last bit of the code. How many of you guys have been waiting four minutes for this one? So basically what this does is it says, okay, let's draw a number. And I, I guess now I don't need to, I, I, could just, uh, I could just pop, I could do this differently now that, I, now that I've 
thought about it things through but anyway i get the number the first the first number and then i eliminate that number from the list from the drawn numbers because apparently i don't need them anymore and then i just go through every card and again i'm not saying there are there aren't better ways to do all this i'm just saying i got it done i got it's 12 30 in the morning and i got other things to do before i go to bed still so uh so I got this going on, draw a number, go through every card and every number and every card. And if the number's there, change it to 100. So for that number drawn, go, th go ahead. And then for every card and all the cards, if that, if that one's a winner, because it'll be the first one to win, sum up all the values in that card that are not 100 and multiply that by the number that was drawn. And when I do that on my end with my data, I get the value 55,770. So that's part one. So that's everything. So, and part two, now, you know, that was the part one is find the first winner. Part two is find the last winner. So this code stays the same. This code stays the same. But now for part two, you can see that the code, it's a little, and again, it's a little, it's a little contrived here. But this is now saying, you know, is, I can't, is this, is this the same? Did I make that the same? Did I change that? Yeah, for some reason I changed, I, I was just screwing around and I could fix all this up in any way. But, um, but it's the same idea. But this, this time around, my whole goal was, you know, at first I thought, oh, what is the last tick, what is the last card? But I forgot that I have to, I have to figure out when, when the last card wins. So I have to keep playing until the until there's one card left and it's a winner. And so, but it's the same thing. And again, I could probably go fix this up and make this identical, probably. I'd, but I was, but again, I was screwing around for a while. And I finally got it to work. But it's the same idea. Just change all the numbers to 100 for all the cards that are currently in the card index or the card list, and then now go through and eliminate all the cards as you go because there possibly could be more than one and you don't want to accidentally screw that up because it you know if you if you wait you know if you you know wait so this basically and it, this basically goes through and base and figures out if a card is a winner eliminate it if it can but if there's one card left this is saying if there's more than one card get it off the list but if but if there's only one card left print it out so say like so there's a so even though they'll be down to one winner we'll still keep going because when i hit this and it's greater than one say it's two there's two cards in the list this pops it off and now there's one and now it'll do it again until it finds the winner for the final card because then for that final card it'll fall through the if statement hit this guy print this thing out which i don't need to do anymore i got the right answer and then and then it'll print out my value. And my solution for this comes out to be 2,900. So as always, this was a lot of great fun. Uh, <laughs> I know it's advent of code. I just wish it was, as these things get harder and harder and finals start coming up, I wish I had more time. And, because these are fun problems to solve because it just gets your mind working. I had to look up. I had to remember how to, how to sort or uh, split and strip data like crazy here. And, uh, but it's fun. Like how I still to this, I can't really imagine how hard, how long I would be taking to just parse the data in C++ compared to all this cool stuff you can do in Python. So getting to like Python more and more, getting to learn 46 lines of code here and 38 lines of code there. So, um, comment below, send emails to swordb at cod.edu. I am going to move on to M Scroggs's problem at least for a minute or two, see if it's hard or not. And if it's hard, I'm moving on to other things. If it takes me only a couple minutes, then I will post that video tonight. Otherwise, I'll probably get to it tomorrow, all 20 of you who are watching. So thanks for sticking it out as always. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. See you.